Hey, everybody. Wow. I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, my tech was not working to let me in. So uh, hopefully everybody will be able to get in now. Uh, I was texting Jamie and I have to tell her I'm in because, of course, you know, if you start early, your tech works no problem. If you start just on time, you will be just about assured the tech will get jammed up, right? So uh, anyways, uh, hey, Eric, what's going on? How are you? Long time, no see. Uh, Roger, beautiful, September 23. Uh, I'm so glad to help you. So that's really awesome. Um, hopefully more people will be coming in because I, you know, I'm on a mission here to help people. So Marco, I am glad to see you, my friend. Uh, Hey, so Sohal, Sohal, uh, welcome, welcome. Okay, welcome everybody. We are, I'm gonna take live questions. So if you have any questions, uh, put them in the chat, please. Hey Jeff, what's going on? Abdul, nice to see you. I am doing a great, thank goodness. Uh, hey Zayad, welcome, welcome. So, okay, if you have any thoughts or questions for me, please put it in the chat, but I do have my thoughts organized here in terms of we are going to talk about three steps that are necessary to leave porn and explicit matter behind. Uh, we are also uh, open to talk about erectile dysfunction. I have some ideas that I've organized around that and I've been thinking about relapse a lot lately too so um, I'm going to dig in there. Hey, Brian, what's going on? John, uh, you're not hopeless, my friend. I am here to help you. You are hopeful. You're hopeful. So let's focus on that. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, thank you, Eric. Please tell the world uh, about my website. We are, let me give you a couple updates while people are coming in. Our website will be updated. We've been working diligently on it for way too long, honestly. So we're on the last uh, pieces of updating the website to round it out a little bit and have it be easier to navigate. Um, I was offered a book contract with HarperCollins, which I'm very excited to say that my book is in the works. And if you were here in the fall, I had basically... Uh, contented myself to the idea of putting on putting my book up on Amazon. So I am very excited that um, now it's going to be much more widespread and getting into the world. So um, that's really exciting. Yep, we can talk about hookups. Yankee, we absolutely can. Hey, Wes, how's it going on? Good afternoon. Feels like morning to me. It's very uh, rainy and dreary here uh, in North Carolina today. Um, how, why do I always forget the pain of relapse after about a week? Uh, DJ Simon, we will definitely dig into that. Um, okay, so I'm going to dig into questions. We might as well just fire away and then please put them in the chat box because I'll keep going through to see if there's any new questions. And I am going to start. Uh, oh, some and I will get to yours, but I am going to start with DJ Simon's. How come I always forget the pain of relapse? after about a week. And the reality is your brain needs to go back to porn or sexual media. It needs it. So the pain of relapse becomes dimmed to the need, which will show up as compulsion, or it'll show up as urges. It'll show up as, you know, seeming high libido, which we should also dig into libido versus hypersexuality. But you're the hijacker within you will convince you the pain of it was no big deal and make you go back for more. This is the real deal. This is a compulsive behavior, whether it's masturbation, fantasy, lusting, porn use, or sexual media. It, a compulsion means your brain needs it. And especially when you move from, so just to remind you really quickly that there's a continuum from use to misuse to abuse. From abuse to compulsion means you're no longer choosing to use it, it's using you. You need to do it. And then when you move over into full-blown addiction, addiction is you need to do it to not feel bad. 
where compulsion, you may still be doing it to feel good, but it will flip over to if you stop doing it, you'll have withdrawal symptoms and you'll feel bad. So uh, just remember the pain of relapse is real. So let me offer you a suggestion because we're going to use these this time together as coaching call, as a coaching call also. The suggestion is after you have a relapse, you know how I think about this. It's win or learn. It's not a loss. So I don't even want you to perceive it as a loss. I want you to perceive each relapse as a learning moment, a learning opportunity. So after the relapse, write it down, put down how you feel, remind yourself how terrible it feels. And it still may not work as well as you want it to, because remember, your brain is in the mode that it needs to go back. The way to not need to go back is to heal your brain. So we're going to talk about those three steps in just a few minutes. But, you know, put that pain of relapse down and then get rewiring your brain in the right direction. And basically the three steps are you have to unwire your brain from the need. Then you have to rewire your brain towards the healthy, optimal pattern. We call this a recovery journey because you're recovering the healthy, optimized brain of your youth. Then you have to hardwire that brain pattern in, in the adult mode. And those are the three steps. Um, okay, so uh, Summit or Summit, thank you very much. I'll put your comment up. Thank you very much. I'm trying to help you here, I really am. So I am so glad to hear that uh, you are healing and you're moving in the right direction. So that's totally awesome. Um, okay, so uh, let me see. I'm okay. So, Sir Alfer, if you're in a position where romantic connection with a real woman is not immediately possible and may only be possible in one to three years, will it be okay avoiding PMO and fantasy for that long? Yes, the answer is yes. So I know this might seem uh, I guess counterintuitive, but it's because of what I was talking about before. We are discussing hypersexuality here. We're not discussing your libido. You will many times confuse libido for or hypersexuality for libido because that's all you know. So this question is coming from uh, the standpoint or the hijacker that hasn't ever gone that long without porn and masturbation and fantasy. But you absolutely can live a healthy, happy life without it. But it may be difficult because your brain is wired to need it. So if it is difficult, not that I want you cheating, but cheat in the right direction. And this goes to the, the thought on relapse that I've been having. The thought I've been having is, I've said this before, I made a video on two types of relapse. There's early relapse, early in the game, early in the recovery journey. You've just decided to quit porn. It's only been a week or two or a month. Early relapse, you haven't rewired your brain and you haven't gained the skills to keep moving forward. So relapse is possible. Um, I won't say it's inevitable, but it might be likely because you actually haven't done any of the internal work or you haven't regulated your brain. But later relapse, if relapse is still happening long into a recovery journey, you haven't learned. Relapse is win or learn. If you keep relapsing, you're not learning. You're slow on the uptake and learning. So it's important that you use relapse or you use the moment you decide that you're not going to uh, engage in fantasy or lusting or PMO for the next one to three years. When you decide that, so it might get weird is the way that I talk about it, where your brain's going to want to go to sexual media. It might be lusting more in the real world. It might even try to convince you to do things you've never done before. But the idea is that's because your brain is wired towards hypersexuality. If you unwire your brain and rewire it back to the healthy mode, you absolutely can go one to three years, especially if you're building healthy intimacy with people in a really healthy way and you're moving toward a connected romantic relationship. But that's a new framework for the hijacker. So the hijacker really has to go and your true self has to step forward. The only way that can happen is by unwiring your brain from hypersexuality and wire it back to healthy intimacy and healthy sexuality. All right, I hope uh, that helps you out. Okay, let's talk about, on the cusp of that, let's talk about Yankee's uh, question about random hookups. 
Now, we live in a day and age where younger people and, and dare I even say older people, dare I even say married people, are engaging in more and more hookups. Hookups come from a palpable societal culture of hypersexuality. I don't need to tell you this. You're aware of it. If you if you go on any streaming service, if you watch TV, if you're on your phone at all, you will know that hypersexuality is rampant where, you know, people are looking for sexuality and people are putting themselves out there in a sexual way. It leads more to people are objects. It's objectification. So if you have a random hookup with a person, it's only for high levels of pleasure, especially if you're doing it to avoid intimacy. So now many people don't want to have to put the energy into a connected relationship, even though it's ultimately what they want. So this is the dichotomy of the situation that we know that most people actually want to be in a healthy relationship, but it requires work. It requires vulnerability. So if you're in the mode of just random hookups, you're just using those other people as an object for the highest level of pleasure. So that doesn't, you know, get you to your end goal. So I would love for you to think, what is your end goal? Like, what do you want for yourself in five years, in 10 years? What do you envision your life like? And I work with a lot of people who they live that hookup lifestyle. And then it dawns on them when they're 30 or 40 that they don't have any real relationships and that they've went through all of these hookups. And that can lead to a lot of grief. It can lead to a lot of identity. Um, you know, they don't know who they are. They don't know what they're doing in the world. And they're definitely not creating what their true self wants because they've been moving through the world letting the hijacker let them hook up with people. So long story short, figure out what your goal is. Recognize you're going on a dating app or you're just hooking up with people. You're just using them as an object. And that might be what you're doing right now, but ultimately, you know, is it, um, is it serving your highest needs and what you really want? Okay. I hope that helps you out. Uh, my book. I'm very excited, Zeal Warrior. Thank you. Uh, it is slated to come out, I know, March 2025. So apparently this is how long all books take once you enter into a book contract. So it's really exciting. We just switched the title, which I'm not sure if I'm allowed to share. So I'm going to hold off on that. And we're working on the cover and uh, we're moving forward. So it's really, really exciting. And I'm mostly excited to be able to help a lot of people. Um, okay, so let's see. Why do you say that men who say they cannot find a partner or a honey talking BS? Ray, I think I saw your comment. Um, so let's dig into this. And I, I, I'm back to doing comments. So that's another update uh, because I have been uh, I've been on my way out of toxic mold poisoning, which I've shared before. So I'm moving, I'm moving forward. So things are good, but I haven't been doing comments myself. So I've, I'm digging back in and I saw this comment and I don't know that I've said that you're talking BS, but what I mean by that is that this is an interesting thing. I work with people who come in all shapes, sizes, cultures, um, backgrounds, personality types. I work with one of everybody, which I think is so cool. You know, different orientations, you know, just people from all over the world. The oldest client I have, I believe is 87. The youngest client I have is not even 18. So his parents are in the mix of the coaching that I provide. I work with women. So the idea behind this is that every one of those people have been able to find a partner. So there are people I work with who are on the autistic spectrum. They don't go, I am on the autistic spectrum. I can't find a partner. It's what you attract to you. So if you're caught in a porn cycle, it will be very difficult to attract a partner to you. That is the reality because when you are caught up in the porn cycle, you're objectifying people, you are thinking of other people as objects of your pleasure, which really are dopamine hits. 
it changes the framework of the way that you perceive the whole world. It makes it really difficult to find an emotionally healthy partner because there's also people who put comments on the YouTube channel saying that I'm crazy because any woman that they find will be totally high maintenance, will never have sex with them, will take all their money. Like that's the framework that that person has because that's their experience. But their experience is totally informed from a porn influence standpoint. So my point is, if your whole perspective is framed from a lifetime of consuming porn and masturbating and trying to get the highest levels of pleasure, it'll be difficult to get that partner to come to you. And when you leave porn behind, that framework shifts. And even just in the last couple months, I have a couple clients that are particularly interesting to me because they didn't really want to sign up, honestly for my neurofeedback coaching program. So we start working together personally and they're like, they're not that committed, but um, their wives have made them start because if not, you know, they're most likely getting divorced, but then their brains heal, their brains shift. And the services that I provide, I'm able to measurably see how a person's brain is improving. So I can see the brains in a 180 difference. It's a, it's a hundred percent healed. And the, the people are like, I can't believe I thought what I used to think. And that is the difference. That's the difference. Uh, okay, so let's see here. Yes, a life of sad enslavement, Tyler, I feel you. No such thing as urges. Well, there are urges, my friend. Um, okay, so let me jump back up here and see what we've got. I just want to, okay, I'm just trying to go down. So the whole point there, Ray, is if you want to, honey, you set the intention and then you take pragmatic steps towards it. Um, okay, I think this question, holy goalie, why do you watch things that you aren't actually interested in? I think what you might mean by that is why are people drawn to things that actually don't interest them? The idea there is if you're consuming content that you don't even want to watch, it's likely because of the dopamine rush your brain is getting that might not even be perceivable to you anymore. So people will watch violent scenes, people, you know, just on movies or because of the adrenaline rush that they get. And it's likely that that type of content is paired to dopamine or linked to dopamine for you or for a person in particular. Um, so that definitely is something, uh, open to new clients, always big D. So if you go to my website, if you're interested, I offer consultations, which the reason I do that is I know many people haven't, um, shared their story or don't know what to do and don't know where to get help. So I still offer consultations where we can talk one-on-one -on -one for 15 minutes. And then the first step of working with me is called a QEEG brain map in the brain map. I'm able to see exactly what your brain is doing and how far the gap is from what you have going on and the healthy brain performance pattern. And I've been talking um, in my videos lately, trying to make it easier to understand that there's two brain types that are behind a porn cycle and then especially erectile dysfunction or sexual arousal dysfunction. The first brain pattern I'm calling strained brain and it is a brain that's going too fast and too slow simultaneously. It is what keeps you stuck in the cycle and makes you feel stressed and overwhelmed at the same time. Your brain can stay in that pattern for a long time as it's worsening and then you tip into drained brain. Once you get into drained brain, that's when there's such desensitization of the reward center that now it's difficult to be stimulated by a real life honey and it will push you back into the screen. And sometimes you'll even have erectile dysfunction problems when consuming porn or masturbating. You know your brain's been really desensitized if that happens. So we take a brain map and I can see how far that gap is and if you're using one or both of those patterns. And I now have a three-step to heal ED program on my website, drtrishley.com, and it explains how your brain becomes desensitized and what you can do about it. Um, thank you for the donation. Also, all the donations will move forward um, into the nonprofit that I have founded. It's called Porn Brain Prevention. It's at pornbrainprevention.org. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. 
Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is a cool question. So Marco, what do you know about so-called quote unquote superpowers from NoFap and sexual transmutation? Can everyone experience these effects sooner or later? Would it be a big motivation factor? Um, I think it should be a big motivation factor and I happen to know a lot about it. So um, the idea here is, you know, of course, superpowers might be, uh, you know, framing it really with some grandiosity, but the superpowers come from being highly neurologically regulated. I know what you're thinking. It goes back to your brain. So when your brain is in that optimal mode, so I already told you, strain brain really far away, drain brain really far away from the optimal mode. The optimal mode is the sweet spot of the zone or a flow state. And like I shared with you, there's going to be website up updates. They're probably going to take like three more weeks. We've made a really long page about neuroflow, peak performance. It's basically this superpower that you're talking about. And how do you get it from sexual transmutation? You get it by taking all of that energy that you've associated with sexuality. That's hypersexuality. You're going to hypersexuality to regulate yourself. The transmutation part is not putting that energy into hypersexuality anymore, but instead using it from the inside out to create the life that you want. And it literally goes back to the green zone in your brain. When your brain's in the green zone, you can accomplish anything that you want. And I know you might think it's foo-foo energy for me to say that then it will attract to you what you've been desiring, like a partner, like a job, like a move, like anything that you want. You can attract that to you because you are calm and focused and you're using a really healthy energy pattern. When your brain's using the healthiest energy pattern, it creates an electromagnetic field around you that resonates at a healthier frequency, which people want to be around. And you've probably had this experience. I know I had it once getting my nails done, which desperately need to be done right now. I, I walked in and I, I didn't know there was a woman sitting there and she didn't even say a word. She started to stress me out just because the energy coming off her was palpably anxious, running at a very fast speed. So when she did start to speak and yell at the people in the nail salon and she was going off on someone on her phone, like literally she didn't even talk and I could feel it coming at me. And then I had to utilize more energy to regulate myself in that experience because I didn't have my noise canceling AirPods, which I now bring every single time I get my nails done. Um, Kevin, hey, uh, my practice is actually all online now. It is global. I live in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and my husband and I have a practice called Lee Brain and Spine. But if you go there, you get him, not me, which people have done before, just so you know. And they are not that happy when they uh, walk into the room and it's Dr. Cosmos Lee instead of me. So if you go to drtrishlee.com, all of the services that I offer now are... Um, are provided online through online portals, at home technology, and um, we do Zoom calls. It actually works out really beautifully. It's been very exciting for me. I've been doing that, I think, seven or eight years now. So if you want to work with me, you can go over there. You can live anywhere. You don't even have to come to me anymore. Um, before that, before I found a really awesome neurofeedback um, protocol or portal and technology, people had to come and they would, you know, they would come to Chapel Hill and I had agreements with hotels and things like that. It's not even necessary anymore. Uh, let me see here. Okay. I'm going to put this one up about ED, Roger, Francois. Hello. What's going on? Um, okay. So quit for seven months. This is a very good question. I still cannot achieve a full erection. Keep an erection during intimacy with my wife. Is marijuana use social media keeping my dopamine receptors from recovering? The answer is probably yes. And I know probably yes doesn't feel that great to you, but I will give you an explanation, hopefully not a super lengthy one. So, yep, marijuana, it lowers the power in your brain. And if you're having difficulty with er erections, it's because those dopamine receptors have been desensitized. 
that can lower the power or slow the speed in your brain. So marijuana use is going to lower it and it's going to make it so that you can't achieve an erection. Social media use, if it's sexual media use, that's going to be more of the culprit because that's going to be giving your brain a lot of dopamine so that then you're still desensitizing. The solution is stop desensitizing, start resensitizing. The less you desensitize, the more you resensitize, the faster your brain will heal. And so I want to remind you that you said it's been seven months. It requires no desensitization and or as least as possible and lots of resensitization over time. So it's training and sensitization over time. Seven months might not be enough time for you if you're not doing many things to resensitize. And if you go to my website, I endorse brain training using technology. I offer a program called Brain Training 101. I think it's $49. You do have to get the tech that goes along with it. But in that program, there's a link and you can resensitize your brain using technology. And, you know, if you did that, the whole thing would cost you less than $300. And I will in a second, I'll find the link for Brain Training 101. And the headband is, I don't sell the headband. I just endorse it for the company because I use mine all the time. So, you know, get into Brain Training 101, start training your brain, and it will absolutely shorten the length of time there. Uh, okay, dark dark night rises. The one dark night. Uh, yeah, all is well, my friend. Hope you are good too. Uh, let me see. Zayad, I think I probably just answered your question too. Uh, condone cannabis. You know, it's not that I condone it, and not that I, you know, you know, the human condition is a challenging one. But what I want people to do is to do the least amount of things that makes their brain unhealthy and do the most amount of things that makes it healthy every single day. So um, when it comes to things that aren't completely uh, damaging your brain, like porn, that moderation for all the other things, you know, sugar, it's, you know, I, I don't want anybody eating tons of sugar, but again, you know, if you're going to have a little dark chocolate here and there, um, let me see. Uh Single people. So what about single people? Um, again, I would encourage you to think about what is your goal. So if your goal is to no longer be single, I guess the theme for today is going to be decide what you want, set a goal and make sure your action steps are taking you toward that goal and you are taking the least amount of action steps away from that goal. So if your goal is to not be single anymore and to have a partner in a romantic and shared, connected, healthy sexuality relationship, you have to do all the things that move you toward that. Porn and masturbation, lusting, fantasy, those are not the things that move you toward. So it's still imperative that you adios porn consumption, uh, eliminate or significantly reduce masturbation. And if it's going to be masturbation, it's masturbation without fantasy. If you go to high levels of fantasy, you're still desensitizing those dopamine receptors. And that goes back to the question about, you know, if it's been seven months, fantasy can keep your brain from resensitizing. So Everything you want to do is many things that move you towards your goal and as few things that that lead you away. Tyler, addiction does exist. I am not wrong, my friend. These are not even my ideas, but thank you for playing the antagonist here. Uh, but, you know, addiction is real and, um, you know, it can be difficult to come out of. So let me see here. Tyler, you're on fire here, my friend. Um, okay, so. Okay, so in terms of masturbation, how to step away from masturbation, it's the same idea, knowing that you're going to masturbation for high levels of dopamine. Let me give you another strategy, is that when we think about dopamine dependency, maybe that's a better word for you, Tyler, when we think of dopamine dependency, it means your brain is going back to a certain behavior to get high levels of dopamine, likely a masturbation habit, 
developed because of being porn influenced and it's involving high levels of fantasy, which is giving your brain high levels of dopamine. You've probably heard me say in the videos before that it's, you know, level 15 stimulation. So the idea is to unlink your brain or unwire it. That's the first step. I know I saw somebody ask, what's the first step? The first step in recovery is unwiring the need to go back to porn or masturbation, fantasy, whatever behavior you have. You have to unlink, unwire that need. Technology can help you do that for sure. Um, but it really is about internally having a shift from hijacker to true self. So the strategy I was going to offer you is to get as much dopamine from your real life. That's why going back to the question about the partner is if you can, if you stop porn and masturbation and you move towards, you take steps to get in the world and meet people and put yourself in a position where you might connect with another person. And then you do, and you're able to develop healthy intimacy and sexuality. You no longer need porn because your brain is linked into your real life. We want to do that with as many activities as possible. So lower level fun and exciting activities like you know how i like to box i like to work out workouts are a great way to get dopamine into the system that is going to be a way you can go into your life and get dopamine instead of going back to masturbation it's about getting out of the behavior and unwiring your brain from it rewiring your brain back into your life and in i offer a 90-day program in that 90-day program it's actually over a hundred lessons now you walk through lesson by lesson by lesson over a hundred lessons and my point about that is that this is a this is a deep end issue it's not a shallow end i can't just give you a one-off on <clears throat> you know how to stop masturbating forever one strategy you can use is to find dopamine in the world, but it is complex and comprehensive. And that's why the 90 day program is what people need. That's why when it comes to digital programs, I only offer an introductory program and the big program that has everything you need, has all the tools, techniques, and strategies. It has a monthly meeting with me. Actually, Zach Carter right now is doing weekly meetings because we want to give you everything you need and the accountability so you can actually succeed in 90 days. It requires changes from the inside. It requires rewiring of your brain. But when you start to move through it, you know you're different. You know you don't need it anymore. And that's the that's the goal. Um, actually, we're having a flash sale on the 90 day program for $99 off. And um, you can use a coupon code flash 99, which I'll put into the chat um, in just a second too. Um, let's see, I'm trying to keep up here. Gravity Chamber, thanks for the donation, my friend. I really appreciate that. Let's see, okay. Um, being Prem, I am so glad to help you, my friend. I have over 900 videos now, which is pretty amazing because I started this channel after being impacted by porn addiction in my own life. Um, it wasn't part of my job. It wasn't anything I was doing for work. I made one video trying to tell the world of all the pain that porn can bring you. And people showed up for my first subscribers. Really cool. So um when you let me know that I'm helping you, it really matters to me. I totally appreciate it. Um, okay, let's see. Christian, how are you? I'm very excited to have my book coming out. You're right, because the science behind this is really important. Uh, yeah, thank you. I know I'm really excited, Robert. Uh, the book's going to be really cool. Uh, let's see. Look in here. Uh, Ray, yeah, I see you, Ray. I, if I said it, then that's why, my friend. Uh, Big D, I think it is an energy, an energy thing that we know that at the, at the core of a porn habit is intimacy issues and challenges with vulnerability. So, um, and shame, shame's at the core too. So, okay, let's see. I'm just going through them. Uh, 
Uh, hang on, I'm just kind of trolling down here to see. Uh, okay, so let me give you a little more information on the headband. The headband, I'll put the link up for the headband too. It moves you through to the Muse. It's made by Muse. Um, what it does, it has one protocol in it. So you cannot imbalance your brain, which is the beauty. You can't mess yourself up. You can only improve yourself. And basically it's like a workout for your brain. I've recently made a couple of videos talking about it. And the way that I think about it is because people always say, I don't get it. How can you just put this headband on and then it improves your brain performance? And the analogy I've been using is that it's like if you want to get big biceps, you just need to do bicep curls. You, you start with 10 or 15 pound weights. You have to rep the bicep curls. And if you give the muscle the proper amount of feedback, it will grow. And then when the 15 is too light, you swap it out for a 25 pound weight. And you keep going up, you're up to a 35 pound weight. You don't ever have to look at your bicep or think about your bicep and say, hey, bicep, get bigger. You, it's not a cognitive activity. It's not an active activity. It's passive. All you have to do is use it. So you put the headband on and it gives your brain feedback on its own performance pattern in the form of sounds. It's audio feedback. So basically, I, I usually do the ocean plus music soundscape. The ocean sounds modulate. It's choppy and stormy if my brain is active, if it's tired or if it's stressed out. And then when I bring my brain down into a calmer, more focused mode, which you can visualize on the graph at the end of your session, then the waves are calm and lovely. And if I can get my brain really calm, birds will perch on my shoulder and give me the reward, letting me know I've optimized my brain pattern. So essentially it's a workout for your brain and you can't work it out wrong. It's just like a bicep curl. You could not work it out wrong. Um, uh, okay, so we have a question. Hey, Kevin, uh, a question about fantasy. Is all fantasy bad when I'm conjuring porn scenarios? I would say yes, because essentially that's like dissociating into an unreality. And again, it goes back to what I said earlier about if you never found porn when you were young, that would not be a thing that you were fantasizing to. You're only going there in fantasy because you've been exposed to it. And it's a super normal stimulus that we know desensitizes your brain and will make it more difficult for you to view healthy sexuality as stimulating. So it's not healthy for you. It's it has the potential to damage your brain. And the more you fire up those neurons, neurons that fire together, wire together. That's what Hebb's law says. So you will be firing your brain in the direction using the neural pathways that take you toward needing more higher level fantasy. Again, going back to, you know, you want to do as many things to move toward your goal and do as few things of moving away from your goal. And, you know, fantasy is going to move you away from your goal if your goal is to have a healthy sex life with a real life partner. So again, think what your goal is. And if that's your goal, then it's better to stay away from fantasy. And, you know, many people will fantasize about their partner moving into a sexual experience. That's mental foreplay. That's different than going to very high levels of stimulation in your mind. Oh, I, I know. Jamie used to come on here uh, in terms of blocking people's comments. Um, as long as people are OK with. Uh, dealing with people who are putting unsavory comments. I'm okay with them being there, um, but we can just not address them. Um, it's difficult for me to do it while I'm trying to answer questions and I don't want to put the energy in. Okay, so let's see. Day two. Oh, okay, yeah, so go for it. Day two, I already talked about. It. Day two is going to be a tough one because your brain is unwiring so if you've heard me double down on rewiring, get dopamine from your life and uh, try to do as remember, it's dopamine dependency. Try to get dopamine from as many healthy sources as you can. Uh, DJ Simon, good question here about a pet. Um, yeah, definitely. I my dog Chewbacca, I locked him out for this fine live so that he wouldn't bark. Um, but you know, that man's with me at all times. So companionship is 
really important. And I've worked with a few clients where, um, you know, that was a solution for them. So definitely. And there's a lot of science on pets that shows that it is a way to demonstrate unconditional love and to start being more vulnerable and feeling your emotions and connecting. So we know also it can be really powerful for you too, not just an opinion statement. Uh, okay, so this one, let's see, Lita G. Let's see, I'm feeling numb for the past months, even when I watch porn and orgasm and don't feel the dopamine, even things that I use, um, used to do, feel unmotivated. Yep, that's drain brain, my friend. What drain brain is, is it's an increase in alpha, which is medium speed in the brain, which is associated with high levels of dopamine. So when you reach this state, which is anhedonia or lack of feeling pleasure from a high level stimulus and from your life, it's likely that the dopamine, the D2 receptors in your brain have been highly desensitized and your alpha has gone up very high. And I see high alpha in the brain maps all the time. Um, so the idea is alpha is neutral mode. In a green zone brain map, you can shift into alpha to sit on your couch and to chill. And you wanna be able to get into alpha, but then shift back out. The red in a brain map means you're stuck in alpha. So it's being stuck in artificially induced neutral. And if you're in neutral, you can't guess and you can't break. So most times sleep is disrupted. That's breaking in the brain. Gassing, which is motivation, focus, your get up and go. So you're likely in, uh, you know, when you feel numb, that is a very big indicator of drain brain. And the, the headband can help drain brain. But I will tell you that it's more difficult to use the headband for drain brain because it will sometimes it'll give you an artificial 100% calm and if it does that then you know it's not real it's artificial so you have to kind of be careful there it's best to try to resensitize your brain i'm putting the link for the headband in here right now um and i'm going to find brain training 101 also let me put the link to the 90 day program and then I'll answer a couple more questions here. But yeah, my friend, Drain Brain is not fun and I don't want anybody being in Drain Brain, but I have seen people come out of Drain Brain pretty quickly when you start doing all the right things. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I just wanted to let you know the coupon code for the 90 day program is flash 99 and it's good for 48 hours. Hey, Mason, what's going on, my friend? Uh, oh, this is a great question. Nihilistic Punk 24. I've been thinking about nihilism a lot lately, too, because I think nihilism is a slippery slope um, where you can be nihilistic and not even realize you are. So that's interesting. If one is, quote unquote, addicted to sex or exhibits sexually compulsive behavior, can you ever have quote unquote normal sex again? For example, when one recovers from alcohol, the idea is full abstinence. Uh, this is a great question. So thank you. So the, I like to liken porn compulsion or addiction as more like an eating disorder than alcoholism because you don't need alcohol. So if you don't need a substance like heroin or cocaine, like those are things that don't fit into a, high, a healthy lifestyle. Those are things that the goal becomes abstinence because it's very difficult to stay away. So it is tricky when we're talking about, you know, sexuality and developing healthy sexuality, but it's more like an eating disorder in that, the goal is to develop healthy sexuality. So in an eating disorder, the goal isn't to never eat again. It's to take however the nervous system has been disrupted, that now the relationship with food is different. The neural mechanisms of eating disorders and porn addiction are very similar. Um, essentially, like the link to that, to that behavior neurologically has changed. The way it's changed is different, but the idea is still similar. So the answer is yes, but like normal, I, you know, show me somebody who's normal, show me normal sex. I would contend that the best or easiest, most effective way to have healthy sexuality, that's what I like to call it healthy instead of good or bad or normal, 
it's healthy. So healthy sexuality is both people are having fun, right? It's a party for, you know, two and everybody's coming, if you know what I mean, pun intended. The idea is that, you know, it's enjoyable, it's at healthy levels of stimulation, and it involves what's called the happiness trifecta. It's pleasure from dopamine, joy from serotonin or happiness, and connection through oxytocin. It's not just going for the highest level of dopamine, which when that shows up in your sex life, I like to call that one the three ring circus, where you're looking for the three ring circus from your partner to do to you so you can have the highest level of stimulation. That's an imbalanced sex life. And that's something you're likely going to find in hookups or in non-intimate sexuality. So it goes back to that question there. So the idea is, yeah, you can have an awesome sex life. You have to bring those levels of stimulation down readjust your brain and rewire it. So now that feels good and you can totally do it. You can totally do it. Um, Mason, good question. Minimizing phone usage early in the journey and getting in the real world. Absolutely. 100%. Go get dopamine from your life on in your journal or on a piece of paper, do a brain dump for three minutes, write down all the things you used to like to do, all the things you still like to do and start doing them. But a word of the week for me has been sustainable. Start doing the things you love in a sustainable way. Don't, you know, go full throttle trying to do a million different things where two weeks from now, you're not going to want to do it. And, you know, even my son, Declan, who is getting all jacked, he's starting to cut on April 1st, but he's balking right now. He keeps lifting like astronomically heavy weights and it's not sustainable because he's going to blow out his back. So it's like, do, you know, crank some weights, but don't, you know, blow out your back so that you can never work out again. Sustainable. Um, okay. So let me see here. Do you think people can develop a narcissistic bubble because of porn without being a narcissist at all? The answer to that is yes. And then how does it look in relationships? Um, okay. Yeah. There's a great uh, question. Oliver, Olivier, maybe. Um, yes. I know this for sure because I've seen it lots of times. Um, so the way that it develops is it goes back to brain functioning, of course. So you're in strain brain and it dips tips over into drain brain in drain brain. When your brain's using a lot of alpha, it will get stuck in dopamine seeking mode. So you just start viewing the world as your playground for you, for pleasure. That is the essence of narcissism. So narcissists, if it's a true narcissist, they're born and developed because of familial um, issues. We'll just leave it at that. They develop with a brain pattern as a survival mechanism, basically, so that that is how they view the world. But at the core is a low self-esteem issue, which the same thing happens in the narcissistic bubble. You just start seeing the world as dopamine and wanting to get as much dopamine as possible. So then you interact with people, especially as objects for your edification. And when your brain comes out of that bubble, you might not even know the things you've done while in the bubble. That's the slightly terrifying part of it. But yeah, absolutely. And the way it, the way it looks in relationships is, you know, you might think that your partner needs to do whatever you want them to do to make you feel good, to make you look good. If they say anything to you, you might think that they're they're acting out and they're calling you out or that they're being bad to you, but they're not. They just told you that you dropped your napkin. It can lead to anger and to irritability. It can be really rough in a relationship. And when you back out of it, it can change completely. When you change your brain back, you wire it back to the healthy mode, it does not have to stick around. That's different from a true narcissist. It's very difficult for a true narcissist to change their brain because it's a very high level survival mechanism brain pattern. Um, okay. Checking my time. we got five minutes here, my friends. So let's see. Um, Jeff, Jeffrey, uh, breathing techniques. Um, if you don't know about Wim Hof, I think you should check him out because he's super cool. He is 
all about um, cold plunges and Wim Hof breathing techniques. So that would be a really good resource for you. But at the same time, I think easy is best. So I don't even know if breathing techniques would be the thing to move you through a craving. Because remember, the craving is your brain wants dopamine. It wants your mood to be regulated, which if you've trained yourself, breathing might do it for you. What I encourage people to do is to create a pivot plan where they pivot into something in the world that gives their brain dopamine. So a push up is the easiest thing. And, you know, there's even where I am, there's room next to my desk to crank a couple push ups. Push ups will flood your system with all the healthy neurotransmitters, hormones, chemicals, and it will flood out the the ones that can cause you issues like cortisol for stress. So um but if you want to use a breathing technique, box breathing is easy to use where you breathe in for four seconds, you hold for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds, hold for four seconds. But I would rather you change your physical and mental space and go get, get some dopamine from the world. Um, Anthony, this is a good question. I don't know if it's facetious or not, but I'll just give you the one liner on it. Porn is going to shape up to be very much like cigarettes. So we already know it's having a trajectory like smoking. So the idea is smoking still legal, but we know it causes lung cancer and has a high likelihood of cancer or death. So hardly anybody smokes anymore. But if you go back a couple decades, everybody smoked. And it's wild if you watch some, you know, TV shows or or movies that portray the 60s, you know, the 50s and the 60s, everybody smoking on airplanes, everybody smoking in restaurants because the dangers weren't laid out by science and there weren't advocates. So I don't know that it'll ever be illegal. And I, that's not even something that is in my mind. I'm trying to educate people so they can make that decision where it's like, okay, do you want to be one of the first people to stop smoking so that you have longevity? I want you to, so I'm glad you're here. Um, there's a new study that just came out um, maybe about six months ago or so that was showing how men are going to have lower self-esteem than ever in the next 10 to 30 years. And it was listing because of all the reasons because of pornography and basically like what it does to your brain, what it does to self-esteem, what it does to relationships, how it is going to change, how you can get your work done. Like, porn's bad stuff, you know, so uh, truth is truth. So when you know the truth, you stay away from it. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, one, we'll throw this question up. Jesus loves roller coasters. Who knew? I, I like that. Okay. So any port is bad, right? Even love porn with real couples. Well, the idea is you're turning it into something you watch and consume. You're watching other people have sex instead of going and having that experience yourself. So it's like watching a, a, a couple eat a five-star meal. Where I live, there's a place called Bin 54 where the hubs and I like to go. They have delicious food, really, really good food. Do I want to watch another couple eat Bin 54? Absolutely not. I'm going to get my booty in my car and go up to Bin 54 when I want a really tasty meal. So it's just like that. You don't want to turn something that's supposed to be a beautiful experience into something you watch. Uh, okay, so let me let me go down here and see... Well, we've got because we're going to have to wrap up. I have a one o'clock meeting. So let's see. OK, Luke, last question, and then we're going to move on. What is the best thing to remember when you feel like relapsing is remember what your goals are. So and keep your sight and your intention. Relapsing urges only last 90 seconds. So you can get through an urge. They call it urge surfing. I don't recommend it until you've gained some skills and you've rewired your brain. But remember what you want from your life. And remember, porn and masturbation do not fit in. There's basically no way you can make it fit into the life that you're trying to create for yourself. But don't think about it in that moment. Do that ahead of time. 
And when you feel the urge, you pivot, you run, don't walk. You run into dopamine into your life, in your life, so that you can succeed getting through those 90 seconds, getting healthy dopamine. Uh, hey, Mason, um, I am planning more lives, but right now I don't have another one. Uh, let's see. No, um, no, I've actually done live streams a lot in the past. I think I did one in the fall. I was doing them monthly, but then it got away from me because it's a busy life. So I thank you, Oliver Olivier, um, for the donation. I really appreciate it. But I'm going to try to do them monthly again. I've got to get it on my schedule, but I'll be doing them more often. It's been a challenging year for this girl, and it's also been an awesome year with opportunities, but I'm back. So if it's not quarterly, it'll be more often than that. Um, okay. So thank you everybody for joining me. I really appreciate it. I hope this has helped you out. I will be in the comments, even for, for everybody here. I'm here for you. I, I know when comments come at me, just so you all know that, you know, don't seem savory. Those are people who need the most help. And I know you probably don't want to hear that, but so I'm here for it. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Seventh Invisible Cosmic Force, you're welcome. You're welcome, everybody else. And I will get um, a video out letting you know when the next live is. And if you're interested in the 90-day program, use the coupon code FLASH99. Go on over to drtrishley.com. All right. I'll see you soon. Bye.